The Granville Bridge hovers over this blackened studio where the city is reflected in more ways than one. Vancouver's people and ideas are subjects here for artworks in a newly recognized form of scientific art, holography. This is the four-year-old home and studio of the city's only artist really delving into the medium. That's Al Rizzutis. His background in theoretical physics helps in the creation of works for which there are few rules beyond those governing basic photography and the action of laser light. The light that is coming off that photographic plate is diverging at you in a very specific manner, right? And that, spe that specific manner is, is consistent with the nature of the object that you see, right? So it is absolutely no different, right, than, the, than having a, a real object right there because optically and, and the way light behaves, it'll function the same way, you know? So it's a surrogate, it's virtually a surrogate object that you're looking at. I think if you look at the faces, for instance, those faces were created by making a negative, right? Virtually a negative mold, okay? You, make, you then make a hologram of that negative and turn the plate around and the image is pulled inside out and it becomes a positive and the image comes right out of the plate. Right? So that, that is something that, that you could only do like with, with the holographic process. Right? And, and to me it's consistent with, with the medium of holography. If you could imagine in 1990 perhaps walking down Granville Street and seeing nothing but three-dimensional ads coming out of the windows, right? they'd have to pass a bylaw in the city of Vancouver to say that only this volume right, of, the, of the sidewalk could be occupied by a projected ad. Holography fulfills the need for a new language in art today, he says. It fulfills another need, the bringing together of artist and scientist in an age when science is too often devoid of humanity. Practical purposes for the art form abound. Rizzutis avoids commercialism, but has already made a sign for a man who wanted words suspended in space on his office door. But holograms are also marvelous toys. It's a sort of now you see it, now you don't. Looking like black plates from the side, they become 3D when seen from above. I think that there's a dilemma that in the arts today that the painters probably most acutely feel. Uh, we have thousands of years, virtually, of painting behind us, you know, and, and maybe untold thousands of, you know, of years of paintings that never survived. And I think if you go into a contemporary gallery today and see what the kind of language structures that painters are exploring, there's virtually nothing left, you know, white on white, black on black, we've got a line here, some people are doing incredible photorealisms, right, well, why not take a photograph, you know, but maybe there's something in the technique, and there's this kind of a desperation that is happening in a, in a lot of art forms, and it propels us, I think, to, to create a new form, a new perceptual language that is totally free from the, from the binds that, that all the other past languages, you know, experience. And this is why holography is really intriguing, I think, a lot of people, and, and so a lot of artists will move into it because it is a way out. This cube is one of, like, three prototype designs for an outdoor uh, sundial piece. And what the outdoor finished piece is going to simply look like is, is a black granite obelisk with a face laminated in, the, in the, the top of it, right? And it's a sundial because when the sun rises, this face is going to materialize out of the stone. And it's almost, you could call it literally a, a pun on headstones. And when I was talking to the people at Chandler's who make headstones, who are the people that cut it, I said, perhaps this is what future cemeteries should look like. You know, you have your loved one simply popping out <laughs> in space. You know, it might be, seem like a bizarre notion, but it, it functions as, as a working sundial. As the sun moves, the face is going to shift. Right? You, could, you can sort of, I could demonstrate this by shifting the lights around, and you could see the face moving, you know, its orientation to the sun. And then when the sun reaches uh, its particular declination, then, then it will... Uh, the face will just get absorbed back into the stone. Rizzutis also makes video art, and this is a sample. It's experimentation with instant play movies and the qualities of color. Some of his ideas sound bizarre. They come from a studio filled with gadgets from parabolic mirrors to a Moog synthesizer. It's a place where more art forms are explored every day. The video art looks like a science fiction fantasy. But it's a possible tool for the measurement of human brain waves, for instance, which can be painted onto a TV screen with biofeedback methods. Ideas like this in holography are gaining recognition. The Los Angeles Times said recently 3D could be home movies of the future. The scientific art could also shape cinema technology soon, giving us movies projected right into the audience. Rizzutis, whose work will show at the Burnaby Art Gallery this spring, says we live in a colorful three-dimensional world. Why not portray it that way?